as always, uh, find the Q&A icon on your Zoom window and feel free to start typing your questions in right now. And it looks like we're recording and everybody's in. So again, happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us first thing this morning. And I hope everybody's had a nice, nice summer, nice month of August. Um, and hopefully we get, looks like we're going to get another beautiful day today. So hopefully you get a chance to get out and enjoy uh, some of the warm weather before fall truly arrives. I think it's on its way. Um, but uh, thank you again for joining us now in our monthly meeting series. So this is our month of August meeting. We will have another monthly meeting at the end of September. Um, I believe that's scheduled for the 24th. Let me actually get that date so that I'm confirming for you. Yes, the 24th at 8 a.m. And that is the last meeting in the series currently. We will um, evaluate as we get closer to that meeting date on the 24th, whether or not we feel that we will need to extend the meeting series, but we are hopeful that we'll be getting um, a bulk of the outstanding issues cleaned up um, over the course of the remaining month here in September. So um, there's a good chance that we won't need to extend that series. Hopefully you also saw the email communication that went out on August 9th. It did have a list of all the issues that had been resolved in the uh, July deploys. We will also be sending out another email communication this month um, in the next week or so with um, a list of items that um, have been resolved in August and um, any other quick tips and tricks that we want to make sure that you have um, at your fingertips. We have had a couple of deploys uh, in the month of August since we uh, last met. There isn't a long list of items that um, I want to provide an update on today that were deployed in those two deploys. Uh, several of the issues that were resolved were sort of behind the scenes type of issues that um, likely uh, don't make a lot of sense to you as end users or you weren't aware of. Um, so I'm not going to go through a list of issues that were resolved, but I will say that uh, one um, relatively significant issue was related to the reportable event custom list page uh, for those person records that had a large volume of reportable events. Um, it was taking a very long time and sometimes uh, just wasn't resolving on certain client records, person records. Um, but that has been resolved as of Friday. So the reportable event custom list page is loading uh, really quickly now within a within a couple of seconds, um, even for those that have uh, very large lists like five, 600 reportable events. So you should be seeing uh, much better response times there. There has been improvements to the all forms list page as well, uh, but I but I am aware that there are still a couple of clients, um, a few a few person records that have a, a large volume of forms, and it is taking upwards of a minute to load some of those. So FEI is still aware of that and will be working on the all forms list page as well. But throughout the remainder of the system. Um, aside from reports and queries, you should be seeing much faster response times, which is uh, very good and uh, hopefully helping to improve your efficiency a bit. I also wanted to let you know that we did just get a deploy yesterday into our testing environment. So we are working to retest some things that I'm sure are on some of your radar um, radars. So for the adult protective services folks, if there's anybody from that team on the call, um, we are retesting the action query issues. So hopefully those will be resolved, uh, have been resolved and will retest successfully and will deploy um, in a couple of weeks. Along with that, we are we do have a couple of tickets to retest related to the MIMS organization and location address updates. I think they're still um, FEI was still working through some issues that we were having with those flowing into Evergreen. So uh, that, again, if if they retest well, will get deployed in a couple of weeks. And then uh, for those of you that 
um, need to populate service implementation plans, the missing fields related to the service rate, frequency, and duration, um, that's in testing right now as well. Uh, so hopefully that will test out um, and can be deployed in a couple of weeks. And then the big issue um, that's still been plaguing everybody is related to attachments. There were um, a variety of different attachment issues, um, it, of course, with uh, nearly 70 roles and all the different forms and locations where attachments can happen. You can imagine that there were, um, you know, several dozen issues related to attachments. FEI has worked and resolved some of those, and we are retesting some of those, and hopefully uh, those will test out successfully and we can uh, resolve those uh, in our next deploy. They are also still working to resolve some of those. Um, and I don't have the delineation of which ones are in testing right now um, as of this morning, but again, as uh, each attachment issue is resolved, we will roll those out. So you'll see some attachment issues resolve or, um, hopefully in the next two weeks and then hopefully the remainder of them um, by the end of the month. There are a variety of other issues that are still outstanding and being worked by FBI. I'm not going to go through all of those right now, but um, there are you know, several still related to the PCP and a couple related to the conference of assessment. Um, some again related to like slow the all forms list page slowness um, and a, a, you know a handful of variety of other items. Um, I, I just want to reassure you that we are still working those. We are trying to work those in priority order. Um, some of them do take longer than others because they are more complicated. So uh, when those more complex or complicated issues are taking longer, we do fill in with other, um, you know, smaller, easier to knock out type items. But um, they are all still on the list of items to be resolved. We are, as a project team, working diligently to try and get as many of those resolved um, in the next couple of deploys um, so that we can uh, have a good, solid, um, fully functional system, hopefully um, within a month or so. So with that, I think those are the only um, updates that I have for this morning. Um, so I'm going to jump over into the q and I do see we have some questions already queued up. Um, yeah, uh, so the first question is around when we'll be able to have two PCPs open at once. Yeah, great question. That one is still being worked uh, a bit more complicated. We do have the ability to have two PCPs open at one time right now, but it's not two that are revised off the completed PCP. So you can have one that you revised off the completed PCP and you can have an initial open at the same time, but you cannot have two revised off the active PCP, which we do want you to be able to have two revised off the active PCP. So we are still working with FEI on that one. I don't have an ETA for that, Megan, but we it is still um, in the queue and being worked. Um, so we will get that um, done just as quickly as we can for you. The next question is, uh, when revising a plan for a new annual, we find that the strengths, needs, and barriers are migrated over from old PCPs and the comp assessment. We are able to delete duplicate or no longer relevant needs and barriers, but there is no option to remove duplicate or irrelevant strengths. Also, we can open an annual PCP as initial rather than revising the current PCP. Leslie, um, maybe that person needs to contact Udaya and myself and we can meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Um, because I, I will say that um, when you um, create an annual PCP, it will pull in whatever's in your comprehensive assessment. So needs, strengths, and barriers will flow in from your comp most recent completed comprehensive assessment. So if you 
if it comes time for annual planning, you should redo your comprehensive assessment for that planning year and then revise your PCP for annual. So it pulls from your most recent comprehensive assessment, not, not an old comp. Because if you don't redo your comp first, it will pull from the most recently completed, which could be an old comp. Um, it will also, when you do an annual clear out almost everything in your PCP, it does copy, um, it, it will bring forward any goals that are um, not achieved or set to like a complete status. Um, and I think it will also pull forward um, services potentially. Uh, don't quote me on that. I can't remember right offhand. It's been a little while since I played around in the PCP because I've been focused on um, other issue resolution, but it will pull forward a, a, a couple of items for you um, when you create your annual plan. Uh, but it shouldn't be pulling forward um, all like, you know, from, from old plans. Um, so definitely uh, reach out through the ticketing system uh, or uh, through the DHHS, um, evergreen.dhhs at main.gov email address and request a, thank you, Lisa, request a meeting and um, uh, Lisa and Udaya can try to help you figure out what's going on there. Um, and uh, and specifically around um, opening an annual PCP as an initial rather than revising. Um, we definitely want to see what is going on there for you. The next question is, um, I was able to see crisis notes until yesterday. Are we no longer going to be able to view each team's notes? Um, so Amy, I'm not sure what your role is in the system, uh, but depending on your role, uh, if it's like an internal role, like a, like a state case manager or, uh, um, uh, uh, community case man, like case management type roles should be able to see, um, Actually, I don't know that you guys can see crisis notes. Uh, I don't know if Lisa, you remember offhand. Let me see if I can tell quickly. I don't, but I can look right off. Not sure what your role is, Amy, but um, not all roles have the ability to see crisis notes. Um, internal staff type roles might be able to and I can't recall whether community case manager role. So I was just trying to check that really quickly. Um, I don't think we can, Leslie, because I had a crisis uh, person attend to one of my members and I still haven't seen the note. It's been like a few days. Yeah, I don't think you guys are um, set to see those. Uh, view. Um. No, it does say that it does say that you guys should be able to see them as case managers, community case managers. So we'll look into that. Thank you. Take John down a quick note. Uh, but like, um, like PCP data entry role and like prior authorization provider authorization roles and some of those roles would not be able to see those. Um, but yeah, it appears that all the case manager and care coordinator roles should be able to see those. So I jotted that down and we'll um, look into that for you. Next question is, will agencies be able to run their own billing report soon? Yeah. Another great question. Um, that report has been in the queue for uh, revision. So we have a, a progress note, an uh, all progress note report that um, 
had we had originally deployed that for you guys when we went live, but it had some um, access related issues. So we're trying to work that out. And um, I'm not sure where that one is in the queue, Megan, either. So I will uh, jot that down to follow up on that. And we had a lot of um, reporting issues. And so we were trying to prioritize those. Um, so I believe that we've still been emailing those out to all of you. Um, yeah. Monthly. That's correct. Thanks, Lisa. And if somebody needs one, um, they can like in an off cycle or something like correct. that. They can just contact our inbox and we can get them a report. Yeah. If uh you need it like ad hoc or if you didn't receive it for some reason, please email um evergreen.dhhsme.gov and we'll make sure you get that. When running the PA utilization report, I'm now seeing auths for other agencies for our members. This was not previously the case. Um, yeah, Phil, um, nothing has changed with that report that I'm aware of. Uh, so if you could send some examples to us so we can take a look at that, um, either um, some relationships didn't get ended appropriately or uh, something might be going on there. So if you could uh, send some examples to the evergreen.dhhs.main.gov email box, we can take a look, but um, you should only be able, you should only be seeing prior authorizations for persons that your agency is actively serving. that uh note about that as well um next comment is i am unable to edit the family support fund form to include my information name and agency um i have not used this report in a little while so give me just a second Leslie, that's a known issue with case manager name and agency not pulling into family support. Okay. Um, I was aware of a conference assessment and PCP having some challenges with pulling in case manager and case manager supervisor sometimes. Uh, uh, family support also. Okay. Okay, let me drop that down. Lisa, can you uh, check and make sure that that issue is in the tracker? Yes, I sure can. Thank you. Because I wasn't aware of that. Um, not populating the agency name. Case manager and agency name. Thank you. Kind of the same thing with comp assessment and PCP. Okay, thank you. You got it. We'll research and get back to you guys. Yeah. Uh, apologies, Suzanne. I uh, I wasn't aware that that was an issue. So we'll make sure that's in the tracker and being worked. Uh, next question is, will case managers ever be able to delete duplicate info on the record? 
trash can icon in the contacts, addresses, and phone number section in particular would be amazing. Yeah, uh, that would be super nice, Megan. Um, we did not give that uh, capability for a couple of reasons. One, because it hard deletes it. So it's literally gone. Once it's deleted, we can't get it back. Um, and two, it also, because there are shared records, the person records are shared records. Um, there may be a public guardianship representative that's assigned as well as a, a community case manager. And we didn't want, uh, people that believed that a differing data to be deleting each other's data, overwriting each other's data all the time. So we made it so that things could only be edited um, by the end users. That said, um, we do want to help you keep those cleaned up and get the duplicates, uh, bad data deleted. So um, I believe you now have the ability. I know early on when I had shared that um, uh, delete process, there had been some challenges with being able to update some of the records to indicate that you would like it deleted, but you should be able to now go in and under contacts, addresses, and phone numbers in the comment or note field associated with the record that you want cleaned up, you should be able to enter the word delete. And we're going to start running a report identifying those items and getting those deleted for you. Uh, my team's going to be helping out with that. So please feel free to go in and mark whatever records you would like removed with that word delete in the comment or note field associated with those rec each record. And we will start getting that cleaned up for you guys. Um, the next question is, uh, or statement and a question, at one of our trainings in the spring, you had mentioned reclassification dates changing. We're seeing a couple change. Is there a protocol rule for how this will happen, when it will happen? Do you have more information regarding this? So the, the intent with uh, classification, reclassification, in Evergreen is to get those dates to align with the person-centered plan and prior authorization dates, Phil. So I believe that as person records uh, come due for their annual planning, we're trying to get all of those dates into alignment. So when the case manager revises the PCP for the annual and it has you know, a date range of September 1st, 2024 to August 30. Uh, first 2025, um, then we would, you know, have all the PAs auto generated off that annual plan with that date range. And then we would have the case manager create the reclassification packet with a reclass date of September 1st, so that those, all those dates are aligned. And then each year when we redo everything, they, they re-up to the new uh, year appropriately with all of the process. So I don't know if uh, Emily or uh, Donna or Alexi are on and can confirm that that's been the, or maybe uh, Angela or somebody from her team, if that's been the guidance is at time of annual, I believe was when we were trying to get those all into alignment. Yeah, I don't don't see any of those people on the call, but I'm I'm pretty sure that I'm correct. <laughs> um, the next question is uh well again a statement and then a question. Uh an FYI that the PA report for our agency has people we no longer provide services to. Yeah, Carol, if you could also send those examples to the evergreen.dhhs at main.gov email box. Um, I The PA utilization report had been, all those issues had been resolved, um, but where a couple of you are saying that you're seeing people that you don't think that you should, I would like to see some of those examples and have my team research those a bit further. Um, and then you're indicating that your admin assistant can sort and only get the ones that you provide, but I'm not sure why you're seeing the others. Is there 
any update on when the PA report will show the weekly hours per service? Yeah, um, we have been trying to work on that, uh, update the PA utilization report to show the weekly hours, uh, but there's uh, been some challenges with that. That's a, a lot trickier than it sounds. Um, so I don't have an ETA on when that will be available. I, I think it's also going to create possibly some other challenges for certain services if we do display it. Um, so we've had some internal uh, business sessions to discuss that and also trying to work with our report writer to figure out how we could even populate it um, for you. So that one is going to take a little bit longer um, and we may decide not to reflect it for certain services as well. Um, uh, so more to come on that, but once it is available, uh, we will let you know. Uh, Leslie, this is Bonnie. I have a question. In regards to agencies seeing people that they don't serve anymore, when we do a transfer or for case management, when we're doing some of those kind of things, mm -hmm. We end the, lo the agency location <clears throat> and that closes out the case manager, but in the location assignment, there still are agencies where it says reportable event reporter or something like that. And we don't ever, and we don't close those. So if that's still there, would that allow an agency to still see a record? Yeah, well, so those are likely uh, provider um, assignments. Right. But uh, also there agency. are some that are attached to um, case management agencies, but also in providers. So again, if they're changing providers or an agency ends and those reportable event reporter assignments are still there, does that continue to allow them to see them? Just yeah. a thought. Yeah, if there's an active assignment, then then uh, that will provide access to the organization or location for which that active assignment exists. Um, but it will also, it will, you know, um, so like if it's a reportable event provider assignment that's still active and it's a, a provider agency, then that agency, any, any system users with the role of reportable event provider under that location will still have access to that person record. Uh, but if you've ended the community case manager assignment, location assignment, and it's ended the case manager, case manager supervisor assignments, that case management agency will not be able to see that uh, record. So there's the the access is very complicated. There are a lot of layers to the access. Um, if there, but if there are, and I don't know why there would be, so that's kind of confusing to me, but if there are, case management agency assignments for the reportable event provider role, then yeah, those would need to be ended or the that user for that case management agency would still have access under that reportable event role. Um, but I don't know why we would, I don't know why that assignment would even exist. If they're a community case manager, they only need a community case manager role. So we should only be setting up community case manager uh, role. We shouldn't be giving them reportable event provider role as well. Um, so that might be a training thing for my team. Um, same for care coordinator. They don't need extra roles. They just need community case manager or care coordinator and they'll get access to everything that they need under that role. So there should be no reason to do separate assignments for case management agencies. Um, but yes, we, again, we need to be, uh, from an ODES perspective, we need to be very uh, thorough and thoughtful about assignments um, 
provider assignments should be ending when the PCPs are revised. So like at time of annual, it should be ending all of the provider assignments and new provider assignments will be automatically created based on the services added to that PCP. Um, but if assignments got added manually, I know we've had to do some workarounds uh, since deploy, if they got added manually and they're not tied to a PCP, then they're not going to automatically end. So we do need to end those ones manually uh, from time to time. So uh, hopefully over time, as you know, the remaining bugs get resolved and the system is being used the way that it was intended to, and, you know, prior authorizations are happening off of the PCP and automatic assignments are happening off of the PCP and then automatic unassignments are happening. We'll have less of that, um, those manual stragglers and that kind of thing. Um, uh, so uh, similar or uh, aside from that, um, I was actually right on your uh, question, Bonnie, about case manager and not pulling into forms like comp uh, assessment, family support. Um, so yeah, I know we already talked about family support, but yes, the comprehensive assessment and PCP, those are being actively worked by FEI right now. So hopefully those will be resolved soon. Comment from Vincent, I did a ticket to add all my members to my dashboard, but I have not heard back and it's been a few weeks. Is there an estimation of how long it will be before all of my assigned members show up? I don't have an ETA on that, Vincent, but I am aware that that's an issue. It was brought up at our last meeting um, and there is, I believe, still an open ticket around that. So I will add that back to uh, my list. Next question is, when will applications for waivers be reviewed? I put one in in May. I don't think Alexi or Donna are on, but I do know that they have been working those in the correct priority order, and I thought that they were through May or 29. I'll have to take that question back, Karen, because I'm not entirely sure where they are with application reviews. Next question is, should we be able to enter a reportable event for ORC participants? I recently had an issue and submitted a ticket and paper report. Should I have access for reportable events? Yes, um, you should be able to enter reportable events for ORC. Um, I'm correct on that, right, Lisa? They used to enter those in EIS, right? for ORC reportable events? Yeah, they did. Um, we should be able to. I, do we have an ORC reportable event provider? Um, that's the only thing. That'd be section 20. I'm, I have to look. I don't know if we, hmm, we may have to take that one back. 
Diane, definitely reach out through the um, evergreen.dhh mailbox uh, and request access uh, for submitting ORC reportable events and we'll uh, work to get you that access because I think you should be able to enter those uh, directly. Uh, but feel free in the meantime, if you have any to submit them on paper and we will get them entered for you. Uh, the next comment is, I just tried to submit my PA report to the address given. Uh, uh, it's evergreen.dhhs at main.gov. Uh, but thank you, Heather, for sending your attempting to send your PA utilization report um, examples. So evergreen.dhhsme.gov should work. Uh, and Diane says, I did put in a ticket, but couldn't enter info. I can see some ORC, but not this one. Interesting. So you're not seeing the ORC client maybe. Um, correct. So I can only see, uh, I can see other ORC participants and enter reportable events, but for this one individual, I couldn't enter uh, or access them at all. So I oh. did the paper report and I sent in a ticket, but the ticket doesn't want any personal or HIPAA information in it. Yeah. So, do, so in the email, is yeah. that how I gain access? I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, we definitely don't want you putting any um, private information into the ticketing form or sensitive information into the ticketing form. You can send sensitive information to us by email. Just make sure that you send it um, confidential. So put that confidential flag on there um, so that, you know, it's not going across the internet um, in plain text. Um, but yeah, you can send us that information through evergreen.dhhs.main.gov and we can try to look into that for you. It sounds like maybe there's, um, maybe that person's person record doesn't have the ORC um, assignment. So it's not showing up for you. Okay, um, so I have, gotten through the questions that are in the Q&A. So if you have other questions, please feel free to type those into the Q&A now. Um, I did jot down several items to follow up on here, uh, making sure that we have a um, issue in for the family support form um, and following up on the status of the um, billing report progress note billing report, PA utilization report, and uh, the caseload tile, not showing all of your active assignments. Um, and then we will look for the emails um, with the PA utilization report examples, because I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, and also uh, we'll look into the issue with the community case manager role not being able to see the crisis notes because I do believe based on the access control that you should be able to see that, see those. Um, and then uh, Karen and Diane, if you wanna send us emails, uh, Karen, I'll follow up uh, with the application team um, for your one that you submitted in May and then we'll uh, try to get you the right access to that client record, Diane, so you can get your reportables entered. Yeah, Megan, you, you, uh, per our evergreen ACL, you are supposed to be able to see crisis notes. And I believe that you were being able to see them, but it sounds like recently maybe that changed for some reason. And I don't know why. So I did jot that down to see what's going on there. Uh, Karen, if you want to send an inquiry email about your, um, application, I think you can send that to the HCBS waiver email address. Uh, Lisa, you don't happen to know what that one is right offhand, do you? 
Let me just look real quick and I'll pop it in the chat. Again. I think it's hcbs.waiver at main.gov. Lisa will pop that in that's, the chat. That's correct. That's exactly what it is, but I'll pop it in the chat. Thank you. Leslie, this is uh, Cheryl Guimond. I, I just have a question about um, when we do the messaging, sometimes we message case managers or yeah, Evergreen users. We see sometimes that there's multiple, they, they have old roles. Like I've got case managers that have roles from maybe one or two agencies that they may have worked for. Okay. Um, is there, should we be letting them know to end those old relationships, like sending a, a message to Evergreen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Cheryl, let's, let's definitely have you guys do that because I think some of those may have migrated over, uh, from EIS or maybe they got right. activated again for some reason early on when people didn't think they had the right level of access, but Again, community case managers, they should only need their community case manager role. That's the only role they need. And they should literally be able to have access to everything that they need in the person's record. So right. they should have to have like a reportable event provider, PCP data entry, provider authorization. They don't need three or four roles like they did in EIS. They literally just need community case manager role. Right. So if you see that, definitely... Uh, send an email to evergreen.dhhs and say, hey, I noticed that this community okay. manager has extra roles and they don't they don't need. And uh, my team will definitely try to help get that cleaned okay. up because that may be contributing to some of the issues. Yeah. I mean, some of them have roles from previous agencies too. Outside yeah. Of their if agency. they're not active for that agency anymore, then they definitely don't need those roles. Now, those those roles should have been associated with that agency. So even if, so like, say they work for a provider organization and then they changed jobs and became a community case manager with another organization. Mm -hmm. If we inactivated their provider organization account, even if they still have those roles associated with that organization, they will not be able to see anything or take any action related to that. They would only be able to see and take action under their community case manager organization and the roles that they have associated with that. But it doesn't hurt to get it cleaned up because uh, it's weird right. to have active um, assignments for something that they're not you know, actively working under. So it, it doesn't hurt to clean it up, but it shouldn't be giving them access in that regard. It would only be if they had multiple roles under the same organization and one role got inactivated and others didn't. And the person record still had a relationship to that organization and location or location. So yeah, um, I'm sure there are a variety of different things going on, but anytime you see, you know, bad data, erroneous uh, information that can be cleaned up by my team, definitely feel free to share that information forward and we'll get those cleaned up. And with that, uh, I think we're all caught up on the questions that were in the Q&A. Um, so I will uh, give you guys all back 13 minutes in your day. But I want to say thank you again for joining us this morning. We look forward to seeing you on September 24th. And keep your eye out for an email communication that will come out in the next couple of weeks um, related to stuff we covered this morning and any other um, updates that we want to be able to provide to you um, before we uh, meet again at the end of September. And everybody have a great uh, entry into fall and back to school with all of your kiddos. Talk to you soon.